Hi. It's been more than a year since I made my last video on uh, serious art from epoxy resin. And at that time, I was doing stuff like this with uh, lots of Legos in it. You know, Legos from the back that are buried, you see from the front. And uh, since that time, I've, I've done more what I call ordinary paintings. And so I'm going to show you some of those. But um, I'm going to show you also what I do to uh, get those accomplished. Okay, here's one of them. This is, as I say, what I call ordinary paintings. Um, this is part of my religious looking lady series. This is religious looking lady with the uh, calico Olga. And the reason I call them ordinary paintings is that if you look at the back, you'll see that this is just a piece of plexiglass that's been sanded on the back, gessoed on the front. Gesso is ordinary kind of white paint that you use a background. I painted it and then I've coated it with the resin. So all the resin is doing on the painting itself is providing, providing a coating which enhances the colors. Uh, the drawback is, as you can see, it's very shiny. If you don't want it to be shiny, you can still coat it with the resin and then sand your resin down with a, a very, like a 2000 grit wet sanding and that way you'll end up with um, you know, a dull finish. You might want to do something else, apply matte medium to it or something like that. But I've tried that and I've, I've done it a couple times on some of these paintings, but mostly I tend to kind of like the, the gimmick. Uh, I always say you've got to have a gimmick. In, in this case, the gimmick is the, um, the slick finish on the painting. Uh, the gold leaf is applied underneath here, varnished over. In, in some of the earlier paintings of my earliest videos, I was still using polyester resin having to sand it. The epoxy resin, you just let it flow out, go away, and do something else, and the next day it'll, it'll be dried out slick. I'm also using now the epoxy resin to apply the framework on the back that stabilizes it. I can put a, a wire with screw eyes in here. I'll show you at some point in this video. We'll lay out the next painting, the resin on it, the uh, framework cut to size, and weighting it down. But basically, that's what it looks like when it's done. It, it has advantages of uh, not just having one hanger and a couple of spacers, but something to stabilize the entire thing. Here are a few of the newest paintings, uh, both from the um, Religious Looking Lady series, as well as the 38th Parallel series, which are the vertical paintings, um, one of which I am working on in this video. Religious looking figure with homemade dustpan and fly swatter. And religious looking lady receives the keys to 62 Corvette convertible. Most of these paintings are views along the 38th parallel in Kansas and Colorado. Um, many people don't think Kansas is very interesting, but I find it to be quite beautiful.
This is my piece of plexiglass. It has a protective film on both sides. I'm going to remove both sides and sand both sides uh, with a dry sandpaper of about 380 grit. Okay, now that I've sanded, uh, you know, there's all kinds of dust all over here. I'm going to just take an ordinary uh, paper towel, this is a shop towel, wipe all this down. The alcohol is a necessary step even before I put the epoxy resin on to the uh, uh, the finished painting. I wipe the painting down with alcohol because the alcohol gets any grease from your fingerprints off, anything that would um, reject the um, epoxy resin. So you will have sanded both sides. The reason you sand the other side, the, this is the side I'm going to paint on and put the gesso on, but the other side is also sanded because when I'm all finished, I want a roughed up surface in order to apply the um, framework with the resin that will uh, help it stick on there. You want it stuck really well. You don't want any shine on the surface. Like this one had some dents in it and I take this belt sander and holding it vertically like this I go along the edge and sand all of that back so that now I've got this is where I've sanded it away I can pull the these um, plastic residue sanding bits off of there and I have a nice clean edge and you can do that all the way around each side this is really just ordinary wall paint latex they call it but it's mostly acrylic stir it up pour it on here and start spreading it around until I get it even with one of these chip brushes you can need a little more these are the boring jobs that are necessary. These brushes, they always leave little hairs in the painting, so I take my little click knife and pick that out of there. This is the painting I'm currently working on. Um, my gimmick here is a landscape with a vertical, very vertical, narrow format. Uh, and as you can see, I'm painting with ordinary acrylic paints. Um, this is gessoed first. It's, I'm almost finished with the painting. I, I may do a little bit more on it. But um, what I'm going to show you next is how I apply the epoxy resin. It's, it's probably going to be done in uh, two different applications because the acrylic paint itself having little bumps and grooves and everything in it uh, often causes the first coat to dry with little dimples in it. And so uh, that may require a little wet sanding and, and at least one more coat. I've been known to have to do three coats. I'm going to use these little bowls to lay them out. I support the painting on top of these bowls. That allows the resin to drip off of the painting and uh, down onto this piece of polystyrene rather than laying it flat on here and having it stuck to the polystyrene. I haven't said much to you viewers at all about painting techniques ever, but I want to point out that if you're painting something like fire, like this here, uh, or even this orange sky, you have to do that against the white background of the uh, gesso. 
So the very first thing I did on this entire painting was paint where the fire is going to be and then paint up to and over what I had laid out. I had laid out a yellow and some orange and all of that because the light from the gesso has to show through it. If you tried to paint a picture of fire over this dark background, you wouldn't get any glow from it. And as you know, you mix equal amounts of part A and part B. So I'm mixing together, making sure to stir everything off the sides because you know you, you have to get it really well stirred. Uh, I could pour this directly onto the painting and start brushing it around, but in order for it to flow better, I put um, denatured alcohol in it. You don't need much. They, I think they, I've read somewhere they recommend 10%. I never really measure it out. Just pour some in it. When I start mixing this, it gets a lot thinner and it will flow a lot easier when I'm ready to pour it onto the painting. Okay, so unlike the polyester resin, the epoxy resin, you don't have to work with quickly. You've got, you know, at least an hour to fool around with it before it starts setting up. And it depends a lot on temperature. But this resin, you know, has the denatured alcohol in it, so it flows pretty quickly. Uh, I'm just going to spread it around with this brush. And then I'm going to hit it with the um, propane torch to knock all the bubbles out of it and get it as smooth as possible. And once I have it on there and I make sure that all parts are coated, then I'm going to look carefully for the inevitable hairs from the brush that will be in here. And as I said, it's very likely that one coat won't do it. So I'll be doing this again tomorrow probably after a light sanding and an alcohol spray and rub down to make sure that the surface is ready to receive another coat. So that's where we are so far. Okay, this is the day after the second coat and uh, now the, the surface is perfect. There are no dimples or flaws or anything. It's perfectly fine. On the, on the back side, there are drips where the coating has run down. They don't really make any difference, but what I do is take the torch, heat them up, and take the click knife and cut them off. I want a smoother surface before I put this uh, framework on the back. Once again, what I'm going to show you is probably boring, but this is the final step and it's necessary. We're going to um, pour this the resin underneath these boards, these uh, frame pieces that I've cut on my table saw to size. So what I do, and again this is the resin mixed with the um, a little bit of um, denatured alcohol so that it pours very smoothly. And I'm going to, I lift this up because I'm going to pour it to the inside of this framework so that it doesn't flow back out over the outside. I don't want any drips coming underneath and getting on the painting itself. So I pour that on there and lay these down. And I'm going to do that around each board. 
Now, as you can see, I've weighted this down with every heavy object I can find, and I'll just leave it alone until tomorrow. Uh, and those will be tightly on the back. This has the advantage of making it easy to hang, plus it uh, supports the piece off the wall so that it has kind of a floating look off the wall. Framing isn't required. Final steps will be, um, I'll, I'll paint the edges that are kind of white right now. And I'll paint it to match the front so that it, it's nice and clean looking. And I will also paint the outside of each one of these supports black so that if you happen to be around the side of it and you look back there, you just see a you know, blackness rather than uh, these light colored boards. After I pour the resin to uh, glue these things down, I always have a little bit left over. So I mix up a color and pour what's left into these molds. The stuff's expensive, I don't want to waste anything. So I end up with uh, several cups of these different colors, which I later will use in another piece. Waste not, want not.